Now, there's a very famous feminist saying called, the personal is political, and I do believe after 30, 40 years of them basically staying true to this phrase, they've actually made the personal political. Now, what do they mean by the personal is political? Why is the personal political? Basically, it tries to connect your personal experience with larger social and political structures. So, basically saying that everything that you ever experience is somehow political and affected by political things and social things, be it negative negative or positive. But of course the problem with this is that not everything that is political and social affects you in positive or negative ways. Sometimes it could be relatively neutral and benign things where nothing happens to you at all. But the fact of the matter is the personal has now become political because they have willed it. They have they have basically moulded society into such a way that now the political has become personal rather than the personal has become the political in many ways as well. And you can see this manifests itself in many different ways. In fact, it's manifested itself in ways the feminists probably didn't intend it to and I'll get to that in a minute. Firstly, the whole disagreeing with people and deleting them from Facebook because they happen to disagree with you on politics or you vote for a particular political party. Now, I've rallied against this many times before unless the particular person that you don't want to associate with just so happens to be say a raving fanatic of the right or the left that could be a fascist or a communist or anything like that it doesn't matter if these people are stark raving bonkers then there's no reason to delete them because it's just a disagreement at the end of the day if someone voted Trump and someone voted Hillary why can't they be friends it's just a disagreement but the personal is political because these people are not your friends these people are your enemies because the ideology and the movement has decreed that anybody who thinks a particular way and that just so happens to be at the moment Trump supporters, be it enthusiastic day one Trump supporters or pushed into a corner forced to vote for Trump supporters are your enemy because they're quite clearly right wing or they're quite clearly the enemy because look at what we think this person or his politics or his party stands for therefore he is the enemy. They are the enemy. You can't associate with them. What are you? A sympathiser? Are you a right winger? Are you a Trump supporter? Are you against women's rights? Because these people are apparently against women's rights because we say they are. It's tribalism people. That's what personal political basically is when it comes to this. It's dividing society, it's dividing friendships, it's dividing families, it's dividing the smallest sections of society. And why are they dividing it? So they can conquer it. Divide and conquer. Brits taught the Americans well. What can we say? Getting people into two opposed camps is exactly what they want. But it doesn't just end there. As we have seen with a lot of the new feminist issues, manspreading, mansplaining, Basically, anything that a man does in his day-to-day -day life that is relatively benign and doesn't harm anybody is, in effect, harmful because that man is doing it. Personal is political. They're turning their personal grievances into political issues. Now, we all know why they're doing this. All the great big political issues, in the West at least, for women, have been solved. Apart from, say, a few countries, like, say, Ireland, where abortion is still illegal. But by and large, most of the issues have been dealt with in most countries. So what do they turn to? Personal grievances. Turn their first world personal grievances into issues. The personal is political. Now, what does this do? Well, firstly, it's a way to control men. You know, you cannot sit this particular way. You cannot say these particular things. You cannot talk in the way that humans have talked to each other for millennia. You can't do that. Because even though women interrupt people and talk over people and condescend people and explain and lecture things to people, Oh no, it's just a male thing in particular. That's about controlling men. The personal is political. It now becomes a controlling mechanism to tell men what they can and cannot do and to tell women that, yeah, you can do whatever you want because we're hypocrites mainly, but you can do whatever you want because you're the oppressed class, therefore it's okay for you to do so because you're oppressed. The personal is political, people. It even manifests itself in media analysis. And Nita Sarkeesian is a prime example. She doesn't actually analyse games or other types of media like she did in the beginning that have actual political basis to them in the text or in, in the thematic premise of the shows or games or anything like that. She doesn't. She usually analyses 99% of the time apolitical games. Your personal hobbies and your personal enjoyment are now scrutinised under this feminist umbrella because, well, these things are problematic because they have elements that, although we personally do not like, they're quite clearly feminist issues because they affect women in some way that we won't actually describe. We'll just make something up as we go along. For example, they objectify women. They tell women these strange subliminal messages like, oh, you have to be this, you have to be that, you can't do this, you can't do that. It's forcing women away, even though it's just a game. The personal is political. What does objectification actually do? What have they actually said that it does? Well, apparently it makes men view women as objects.
sex, it makes women think that they have to aspire to something that they can't possibly reach, and vice versa men, although they tend to ignore the male aspect of objectification entirely a lot of the time. But what does it actually do? What if all of this is actually people being insecure and most of the pressure comes from them? That they think that they have to aspire to that because these ideologues are telling them that this is what society thinks they ought to be when maybe, just maybe, it's their own insecurities. That they want to be like that but they think that they cannot. Just a thought that maybe this objectification bullshit is nonsense and it's simply just advertising and using models doing their job and consensually enjoying it. But hey, the person is political people. And now for the thing where I think the feminists didn't expect it to go. And I think this is MGTOW. I think MGTOW is a very personal and political thing. Now, aside from the MGTOWs that became MGTOW because of the court system and other things like that, where that's very much a social political thing, and I understand that, there's a few who do it because of personal reasons. Say they have very bad experiences with women in their life. You know, they have very bad rejections or they get treated harshly. They can become MGTOW through that. And you see that again and again throughout a lot of the videos. And that is a personal and political thing in many ways other than the more political based ones where it was originally supposed to be opting out of marriage opting out of having children because that can be used against you in this society a lot of them increasingly nowadays are becoming more personal because they get rejected in some bad way or treated nastily and I don't think anybody let alone the feminists thought that MGTOW would come out of this at all and I think that's probably got its roots in the personal is political now what can we do this thing has basically enveloped our society the personal is now political and vice versa. What can we do? Well, firstly, I think we have to open our minds to other vo points of view. We have to accept that we have differences. We have to accept that some things are personal, some things are private, and some things are public, and some things are not. And we have to separate those things. And we have to look at people as human beings. Right-wingers have to see left-wingers as human beings. Left-wingers have to see right-wingers as human beings, and not as automatically enemies that they have to defeat or not associate with. The left does this more than the right at the moment, but the pendulum could swing and we could be seeing the reverse happening. So this is what we have to do. I think basically what it boils down to is be nice to each other, be open with each other and open about each other. Obviously if you don't want to associate with someone, that's fine. That's up to you, that's your prerogative. I wouldn't associate with racist fascists because I'm mixed race and I'm not a fascist. But I would definitely associate with someone who isn't like that regardless of political bent. Anyway people, I think that's the end of the video. I've gone through all that I need to go through. Comment down below if you have anything you want to say about that. I would very much appreciate appreciate that. Like and share the video, subscribe to my channel, donate to my Patreon if you want to see me do this full time and until next time I'll see you all later.